Ladies and gentlemen, let's Red Gaming Tech.com video. We've got recent comments from Shinji Mikami. If you don't know his name, he is the creator of the Resident Evil series, although he stopped working on it way back in 2005, uh, back in the dawn of Resident Evil 4. More recently, he's going back to survival horror roots when he's going to be working on the Evil Within which of course is going to be released on PCs as well as next generation as well as current consoles uh, next year. However, he was recently discussing various uh, facets of the gaming industry as well as the direction of various survival horror games, including of course the series that he originally kickstarted, uh, Resident Evil. And he also talked about risk and development risk about the East and West, and I was, say, Japan, um, Japanese uh, games developers, as well as more Western, say, US games developers. And anyway, I'll read out a couple of quotes. Games have become big projects requiring a lot of resources to create and market. Games have become more risky. Japanese companies don't want to take the same kind of risks like Western developers do. In the past, what Capcom president... Kizo Tsushimoto, I'm hoping I've pronounced that correctly, told me was the, that the game development is becoming more and more expensive and that many Japanese publishers won't be investing $30 million or so in a game. And he also commented that Western developers seem to be working harder, but the idea was that if we can invest $30 million into a game, we can win. Now, Japanese companies are fairly infamous in being fairly set in their ways. It's becoming less so now, but especially back in the day, it was really a division, even on the shelves between Eastern games and, uh, well, say English games. For example, I've actually heard stories of people who, when they visited Japan, they actually saw that you would have, say, American or European games on one side of the shop and their own Japanese games on another, which of course is completely different to how, uh, say, our shops run. Now, I'm not quite sure if it's still the case now, however, regardless, he even said uh, there are still a lot of Japanese, good Japanese companies. And he also commented, as for the organizational structure of companies, I think it would be good if companies would be more flexible in incorporating foreign technologies. He even commented on his choice to use id Tech 5 engine rather than the Unreal. And the purpose behind that, he said, was that he actually found it was easier to customize uh, off the shelf rather than the Unreal engine. Now, it's not a big secret that Resident Evil is not really going in the same direction for a while now anyway that maybe we've wanted to. Now, Resident Evil Revelations is a little bit different. Is definitely going into a more survival horror route, but isn't quite to the point where we expect it to be. Resident Evil 1, for example, is really a completely different game to, say, Resident Evil 4, but Resident Evil 4, compared to the Resident Evil 6, is huge. I really just... It's very difficult to emphasize how much of a difference it is, and if you've only played, say, Resident Evil 5 and 6, I can guarantee you, if you play stuff like Resident Evil 1 or Resident Evil 3 or something like that, it's going to be night and day difference, and I have a feeling that you'll be in for quite a shock. Now, interestingly enough, he even uh, alludes to something I've mentioned a couple of times uh, revolving around Connect, and he said, and I quote, If the accuracy improves and we can really observe the player's facial expressions and heartbeat, the game could react to that, and that could be something we used for survival horror. So, in other words, of course, the Connect itself would be tracking you. Now, we know that the next generation of Kinect on the Xbox One can indeed do that. And despite the fact that I don't exactly appreciate the fact that the Kinect is actually uh, bundled in with the Xbox One, I suppose in that respect it could be pretty awesome. I've even mentioned a couple of times that survival horror games could really use this stuff. Imagine if it basically uses that to see what actually scares you, what... Uh, gets your pulse racing and it could all, even be used for stuff like action games as well but since we're talking about horror I figure it's best to stick with that. He did comment somewhat on Resident Evil's new direction he said I'm not allowed to say bad things so obviously he can't really say negative things about the titles that he originally worked on and so forth most likely because of various uh, agreements and so forth that he's had in place but 
I think this is a very interesting interview for a couple of reasons. The first, of course, is the the risk and the the cost of games now, and this has been something that a lot of people have been saying. Like one of the really, really, really common ones that you hear is why haven't they remade Final Fantasy VII? You hear that a lot, and a lot of this, of course, is simple cost versus risk. Like how much would it cost to recreate the entire of Final Fantasy VII? Think about how big the game world is now in modern day graphics that people actually give a crap about. So we're talking about fun, uh, Final Fantasy VII, say the PS4, with all of the stuff that we'd expect. And then you've come down to little difficult decisions such as do you give the characters voices or do you keep it as text? And if there are voices, you know, what should you keep them the same as, say, uh, Advent Children? Or do you change them completely? There's all of these different decisions that they need to make. And it's very it's very risky because they simply don't know the budgets. And obviously bu budgets now for games are ballooning. Like we don't know the budget for The Evil Within. And although he was talking about 30 million, it's almost likely, very likely, that they're bloody well higher than that because development costs now are starting to rise very quickly. And so it's a case of... You need to be very careful with the technology you are and making sure that you go with the game that, of course, that you know you're going to make money from. He did also speak a little bit about his next generation game, and he said, The fear and triumph of overcoming fears is the same. The different things is that Resident Evil series has its fears, zombies, etc., grounded in science, viruses, and stuff, whereas in The Evil Within, the background of those fears are more cerebral, more psychological like the evil within the human soul. The, that's the big difference within the concept itself. End quote. This is something I've been saying for a while. Um, Resident Evil isn't actually as scary as it used to be, simply because of what they're doing. I've never really considered Resident Evil to be super scary. Resident Evil 2 has its moments, Resident Evil 3 a few, Resident Evil Code Veronica definitely had a few, but Resident Evil 1, there were some areas that... Even when you've played the game once or twice, you really just did not want to go back into because, you know, you're running out of ammo. One of the areas that I hated on Resident Evil 1 uh, was the giant snake. I hated that bloody boss because I always used to try and do it without actually getting either bit or using ammo. And you can do that. It's just a bit tricky. But my goodness, I hated that boss with absolute passion the first time you fight it. I really just hated it. And there were definitely instances in the game where you just think to yourself, bloody hell, I don't want to take this on. On the other hand, if you were to take on something like Silent Hill, it's a completely different mindset. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I will see you soon. Take care, and bye for now.